It is Wednesday, September 9th. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Donald Trump's one-time errand boy, Michael Cohen, has a book out. He warns once again that Trump will do anything to stay in the White House. Meanwhile, it's back to school for millions of American kids this week. But for many, what that means is a glitched out website and a ton of frustration. Lastly, Brazil's former leader Lula da Silva may be planning a comeback. In a new video, Lula blasts the country's fascist president, Jair Bolsonaro, for turning the coronavirus into a weapon against the poor and the vulnerable. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. And these are the stories you need to know. A new Trump World tell-all book was released yesterday, this one by Donald Trump's former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen. It's titled Disloyal, The Memoir, and it's full of juicy anecdotes and observations. Cohen describes Trump as a racist cult leader and says he hopes his message will resonate to people still inside the cult. He also writes that, quote, Trump was a mobster, plain and simple, end quote. In addition to being a cheat, a liar, a fraud, a bully, a racist, a predator, and a con man. One example of gangsterism, Cohen apparently helped facilitate the evangelical leader Jerry Falwell Jr.'s endorsement of Trump in 2016 in exchange for suppressing sexually explicit photos of Falwell. In an interview with NBC News to promote the book, Cohen expanded on the dire warnings he delivered to Congress in testimony before he was led to jail. Cohen said, quote, Donald Trump will do anything and everything within which to win. And I believe that includes manipulating the ballots. I believe that he would even go so far as to start a war in order to prevent himself from being removed from office. My biggest fear is that there will not be a peaceful transition of power in 2020. End quote. Cohen is partway through a three-year prison sentence for financial crimes and lying to Congress for Trump's benefit. Since July, on account of the coronavirus, he's been allowed to serve that sentence from home. Trump's intense anti-black racism, as described by Cohen, has already sparked an international incident of sorts. Cohen quotes Trump saying that all countries run by black peoples are shitholes, including South Africa under the late liberation leader Nelson Mandela. Mandela's party, the African National Congress, released a statement saying Trump is not fit to comment on Mandela's accomplishments and that, quote, all freedom-loving people of the world are appalled by these insults, which come from a person who himself is not a model of competent leadership, end quote. Nevertheless, per the Associated Press, the ANC statement said that if Mandela were alive today, he would reach out to discuss international issues with Trump for all the good it would do. Millions of American children went back to school this week after Labor Day. Many, if not most, are holding classes online. Some southern and midwestern states have been back to school for a month already, and in places that are holding in-person classes, coronavirus outbreaks have been reported. It's not going great. In addition to growing class-based disparities associated with online learning, schools have been plagued by internet outages, software glitches, and hackers. A ransomware attack forced schools in Hartford, Connecticut to postpone the start of classes yesterday. Virginia Beach, Virginia, students and parents were unable to access online classes for the first day of school on account of an internet outage. Seattle system crashed last week. The Miami-Dade school districts went down the week before. In some cases, students are suspected of orchestrating cyber attacks to shut down classes. But other snafus are more mundane. Parents with kids in elementary school say their children are struggling with logins, passwords, connection problems, and other software functions like chatting or raising their virtual hands. Bad tech design also plays a role in all of this. According to the Associated Press, the online learning platform Blackboard, which provides technology for 70 of the nation's 100 biggest school districts and serves more than 20 million U.S. students from kindergarten through 12th grade, reported that websites were failing to load or were loading slowly. Users were unable to register for the first day of school. In Texas, the Dallas Morning News reported more than 19,000 students have dropped out of contact with teachers entirely since the transition to remote learning. More than 100,000 children never participated in their online assignments last spring. Here's hoping for a smoother fall term. Hang in there, parents. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code Majority at checkout. And all shipping is free. 
That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. Brazil's former president, the leftist icon Lula da Silva, may be planning a comeback. Lula released a slickly produced 24-minute video this week attacking the country's current fascist leader, Jair Bolsonaro. Among other things, Lula said Bolsonaro had turned the coronavirus pandemic into a weapon, targeting the people, especially those who are poor, black, vulnerable, and abandoned by the state. At least 127,000 Brazilians have perished from COVID-19. According to a partial translation in The Guardian, Lula said, quote, We're in the hands of a government that attaches no value to life and trivializes death. An incentive, irresponsible, and incompetent government that flouted the World Health Organization guidelines turned the coronavirus into a weapon of mass destruction. I put myself at the disposal of the Brazilian people, especially the workers and the excluded. From the bottom of my heart, I tell you I'm here. Let's rebuild Brazil together, end quote. Lula, who is 74 years old, is technically barred from running for office on account of his 2018 corruption conviction. However, the legitimacy of that conviction has been attacked as a part of a scheme by Bolsonaro, his cronies, and foreign powers with a financial interest in the outcome. Per The Guardian, there's a chance that it will be overturned, paving the way for Lula to challenge Bolsonaro at the polls in 2022. Failing that, Lula's former deputies in the Workers' Party suggested he might run as vice president or throw his support to another candidate who shares his values. And now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. A new report by the Costs of War Project at Brown University says at least 37 million people have been displaced in the wars America has launched since September 11, 2001. That means the U.S. has created more refugees in the global war on terrorism than have been made by any other conflict with the exception of World War II. The authors of the report say their estimate is conservative. The real number of refugees created by America's wars over the past 20 years could be as high as 59 million people. There's a chance that voters in Maine will be able to use ranked choice voting on their ballots this November, thanks to a court ruling yesterday. The state's Supreme Judicial Court overruled a lower court's hold on the voting system long advocated by smaller political parties. Maine Republicans, who opposed the ranked choice voting system approved in 2016, are seeking a referendum on the matter. All that said, struggling to imagine someone who would rank Donald Trump as their second choice after voting for Joe Biden. U.S. Senate Republicans yesterday introduced the $300 billion coronavirus aid bill, which Democrats said is way too small. In a joint statement with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer said, quote, Senate Republicans appear dead set on another bill which doesn't come close to addressing the problems and is headed nowhere. This proposal is laden with poison pills Republicans know Democrats would never support, end quote. The bill would provide expanded unemployment insurance benefits of $300 per week, down from $600 in an earlier relief bill. For the third year in a row, Forbes magazine named Amazon chief executive Jeff Bezos as the world's richest man. The rich continued to get richer as the collected wealth of the Forbes 400 list rose to $3.2 trillion, a new record. One exception was Donald Trump, who fell 77 spots in the rankings and saw his estimated net worth decline from $3.1 billion down to $2.5 billion. Coronavirus has not been kind to those in the hotel business, but apparently other billionaires are doing quite well. Quicker, quickie. That's all for the AM Quickie. Join us live this afternoon on the Majority Report at noon or later wherever your podcasts are served. Stay safe.